Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. It's been nothing but snow. Come on guys, good morning. Ooh. It's been nothing but snow for the last couple of uh, weeks that I feel like has just, it's finally started to thaw. So they're pretty pumped about actually having a little bit of some grass to, uh, to peck at and scratch at. Ooh, I might need my coat. I hear ya. Okay, it's been probably a few weeks or so since I've actually filmed an entire video for you guys. I feel like I've been slacking and I'm gonna apologize about that. But we've had a lot of things going on that has kind of needed more attention than for me grabbing my camera and walking you guys around and giving you an update and showing some of the things that we're kind of doing. But I had a couple minutes. So, come on, I gotta head up to the apothecary and show you what I have in the freeze dryer and what I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing for our next freeze dry batch, which I have right here. Let's hope I don't drop it on the drive over. Before I head to the apothecary, I want to show you just something that I was so excited to see the other day. The other day I was coming home and it was probably one of the first warmest days that we've had in a long time. And I kind of stopped over here and I wanted to see what type of activity we were dealing with with some of our bees behind us. And I was able to get a little bit close and I apologize for not having my camera with me. but. Um, Probably the best feeling in the world as a beekeeper is to see that your bees are surviving, especially the winter. And I was able to kind of walk over and look at every single colony that we have, and I saw activity. You could just tell that they were so excited to be able to, to finally be able to go out and leave the colony and, you know, relieve themselves because I'm sure that they've been uh, cooped up there for a little while. It's definitely a good feeling to know that your bees are actually doing well and I was very excited to see them. Now, in the next couple of weeks on some of the warmer days, I'm gonna go in, just kind of open them up and check and see. There were a few colonies that did require a little bit of just some extra resources because they were some later swarms. Um, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna check them and see kind of what's going on if I need to add a little bit more uh, sugar bricks for them. But I feel like we did a good job last year on making sure that the ones that needed a little bit of attention um, had some of the resources. And then the ones that, you know, when we do our honey harvest, we try to leave a good bit for them because I don't want to have to feed, okay? I've got a lot of colonies behind me and if I don't have to feed, that's money I don't have to spend. I'd much rather have them eat something that they create uh, versus something that's man-made. Now, granted, I'm still on the fence and I'll feed if I have to, but I prefer not to. I'm watching the forecast and if it does warm up a good bit, I will definitely take my camera with me. And I really, I'm really starting to miss my hive inspections and bringing the camera with me and sharing with you all uh, when, I, when I get to spend some time with my girls. I saw something the other day and we were like less than 50 days away from spring. So that's getting me excited. Yeah, it's definitely a lot warmer in here than it is outside. <laughs> Check it out. So on my last live, I actually took you guys and showed you what we were putting in our freeze dryer. I had some spaghetti sauce um, from our tomatoes that I canned and I had some chili that I made up because I don't know how to cook for a small 
family, um, but that's okay because we are able to take all of our leftovers, our excess leftovers, and get them freeze dried. The process does say that it is done, and we did go ahead and check this uh, again when it was first initially done, and we added on just a little bit more time. I'm gonna go ahead and warm my trays up so that when I go to take it out and handle it, my fingers don't get frost bitten because it is rather cold. As soon as I take these trays out, I'm gonna go ahead and get them packaged up in the Mylar bags and sealed and then stored away for my long-term storage. And I have a few empty trays right now and I've got in here some homemade potato soup. Now these potatoes are Yukon Gold. I did grow them from Haas Tools. I was really impressed with the amount of potatoes that I was actually able to harvest off of. I think I planted around 50 pounds of potatoes um, and we got quite a bit and we are still enjoying potatoes from our last year's harvest, which I'm looking forward to be able to grow more potatoes. Because I don't know how to cook for a small family, I'm gonna go ahead and take my potato soup and I'm gonna get it prepared on my trays. And then I'm gonna pre-freeze this because after I take these trays out, I, I do have to let the harvest right thaw out. And since I'm showing you guys a little bit about this freeze dryer, I've gotta show you what my good friends over at Retired at 40 sent to me. They're definitely a larger freeze drying channel and they do some pretty fun stuff. I actually have been watching their channel to see all the things that they freeze dry so that I can make note for it myself. Um, but they've developed a few different products and they sent it to me and I will make sure to put their channel down below and then also their store which is freeze drying supplies. And look at they sent. They sent me these little dividers and they fit in my trays perfectly. I'm already starting to plan to use this. And then the other thing that they have developed, which I think is really an awesome idea, these are sealed lids, but not only are they sealed lids, they actually have dividers in them, which is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and get these trays ready to go and put these sealed lids and they allow for the stackability of it so that it stores so much easier in my freezer. So I will be using these today. If you guys are interested in seeing a lot more of Harvest Right and freeze drying content, definitely go check out Brian and Kelly from Retired at 40. They are pretty awesome and they have got a lot of fun content out there. I'm definitely excited to really start growing the garden again and being able to take some of our herbs that we harvest and get them freeze dried. I'm not exactly sure how many trays my potato soup is gonna fill, but mm, it smells so good. But we're gonna go ahead and do it. Probably two. That's kind of what I'm, I'm guessing at is I'll be able to fill two. I am gonna go ahead and kind of divide this up evenly though so that the trays are going to weigh the same. And then I'm gonna lay my potatoes down flat. What's really funny is when I was making this potato soup, I actually used some of our celery and onions that I had freeze dried to go ahead and make some because I did run out of celery, fresh celery. Um, so this is now two items that were in this were already freeze dried and then they reconstituted and then I'm gonna freeze dry them again. <laughs> so nothing goes to waste, literally. So these lids just snap on perfectly and I'm able to look at that. Oh, what a genius. Absolutely, absolutely genius. How perfect is that? That works out great. The other two trays that I have, I'm gonna probably put some eggs or some milk on it and plan on freeze drying that as well with that batch. Um, and storing it for whenever we may need it. Uh, whether we're camping, whether we're hiking, whether we lose power, it's the flexibility of being able to have the food storage for whatever occasion. The trays are warm and I am going to go ahead and hit no defrost. Ooh, 
go a little bit quieter in the valve so that any of that moisture that's in there will um, come out. That is some chili, some spaghetti sauce, and then I had some baked beans. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely crazy. I'm gonna try a bean. I mean, it tastes just like chili. Okay, that's a little, a little dry, but of course, cause it's freeze dried. I'm gonna go ahead and seal these up one at a time. This is the Mylar bag that I'm gonna store them in. And I do have some oxygen absorbers here um, that I've already opened and resealed. Learned that lesson. I feel like I could probably put about half of what's on this tray in this bag and seal it up. Let's see. That's what it looks like. Now I found when you're sealing your bag, it does make it a little bit easier to kind of fold it over. This is not hot, um, but it will get hot when it, when it touches. And yeah, that's it. And then I check the seal and make sure we're good to go. And I'll set it aside. For anyone who's interested in purchasing their own freeze dryer, I have added my affiliate link down below in the description. And by using my affiliate link, it does help out our channel as well. I can't tell you how much food I've actually been able to save and to put up. On food like this, when I cook an abundance of it, it really makes me feel good knowing that I have that capability of food preservation in the event of. This is our spaghetti sauce. Now, pretty much everything in our spaghetti sauce, actually, yeah, everything in our spaghetti sauce I grew on our farm and I wanted to show you, this is kind of the consistency that it kind of looks like, kind of looks like a moosh, but once I reconstitute it, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference, which I think is pretty crazy. But our onions are in it, some of our beef is in it, and a lot of tomatoes. What I think is kind of crazy is the tomatoes I grew and I canned, and I'm not having I'm not having to waste it. That I think is probably the coolest thing about the freeze dryer is by allowing me to give our food another, another chance. This was about one quart of spaghetti sauce with meat that was in it. And I kind of, kind of chopped it up a little bit because I would like to try to get it in one bag versus two. Because when I go to reconstitute it, it's more than likely going to be one meal um, versus, versus multiple to go but one quart of spaghetti sauce and I have a little bit of a chunk right here yeah that's really good it tastes exactly like my homemade spaghetti sauce and I make I make a mean I make a mean spaghetti sauce for sure our last tray is some baked beans um, that again did not want to go to waste we had about a quart of baked beans as well. So oxygen absorber, place it in, and I'm gonna kind of chop this up. Now this is where those dividers, I should have probably used those dividers. Um, probably would have made it a little bit easier. That's what it looks like. Not bad. Check the seal. Looks good. It didn't take very long to get all of that food stored in the Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers. I'm gonna take this back down to my house and I do plan on showing you guys kind of my food storage area and kind of talk to you about what I have prepped, what I've got going in there, um, and different ways to go ahead and plan on preparing your food and different things that we have done to boost our, our food storage. I will say one of the things that my husband and I do have on our list to one day add to our homestead is a root cellar. So keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching and as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.